After the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, Jesus taught the meaning of that day, that week, and what he had come to do. Hear now the reading of the word of God. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it. Therefore the people who stood by and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. Now is judgment of the world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. This he said, signifying by what death he would die. Gracious Lord, help us to understand this magnificent word, explaining the reason for your triumphal entry into Jerusalem and what it means to us today. In your holy name, amen. Filled with a strange new hope they came, the blind, the leper, the sick, the lame, frail of body and sick of soul, as many as he touched were made whole. Throughout the land they spread his fame, on every lip was the healer's name. Hosanna! Help now, they cried. His answer was a cross on which he died. The Christ we worship is still the same, with healing and wholeness for us to claim. Hosanna, save now, we cry. His answer is a cross that we may never die. We join the Palm Sunday parade. The people cry, Hosanna. We join them, and then we discover what that cry means. And there is so much deeper a celebration in our hearts. The word Hosanna means save now another way of saying help and how did he help oh so much more profoundly than the people ever expected so much more than any of us have ever anticipated when we cry help lord help he answers, and the way he answered 2,000 years ago that week in Jerusalem is the reason that we can celebrate with a greater Palm Sunday parade than they knew or experienced. There's something inside of us all that loves a celebration. I enjoy a parade. I remember being in New York City once when there was a great parade and it was in celebration of a particular person and someone was next to me and pulled on my arm and said, why is this parade? And I gave the name of the person for whom the parade was and they said, well, who's he? You know, I find that many people at Palm Sunday, uh, you know, they join in the celebration of Palm Sunday and march in the parade and wave their palm branches and... Uh, you pull at the person next to you in the pew or at home and say, why is this parade? It's for Jesus of Nazareth. He died for the uh, sinners of the world. 
or who's he? In reality, who is he to you? And the more you accept of what he did that last week in Jerusalem, the more you can say Hosanna, not just as a cry of help, but as an expression of gratitude for all that he has done. Oh, I see it on your faces, the cry for help. I see it in those who are uncertain about whether they are really forgiven. I see it in those who are uncertain about decisions and choices that must be made. I see it on the faces of those who know broken relationships and are deeply hurt. I see it in those who have a sense of guilt and are pressed down and are filled with remorse. And you cry out, Hosanna, oh dear God, help me, help me. I remember when I was a pastor in Gurney, Illinois, there was an old pump out in the backyard of uh, the manse there, and uh, it was an old country house and uh, a dried up old pump, and I used to go out there every so often and try and pump the water out of that pump, and it would never work because the well was dry. And how often my own inner spiritual condition matched that pump. And people were trying to pump out of me some hope, some encouragement, and I was just a young pastor, just starting my ministry. And I hadn't discovered that I could not answer the cry of help of people around me until I'd cried, Hosanna, Lord, help me. And he did. And in those early years of ministry, he filled me with his spirit and gave me his power, and I had something to share with the people around me. Jesus responded to the cry, Hosanna, help us, Lord, help us, by going to the cross. And he declared the essential meaning of what that cross would mean when he said, and I, if I be lifted up, will draw all peoples unto myself. All throughout Jesus' ministry, he was a magnetic Lord. Jesus, the God-man, was fully man and yet God with us. And so wherever he went, he drew people like a magnet. The particles of their being were united together as they were drawn to him in faithful obedience. When he said, come, follow me, they answered the call. When he offered to heal and care, they came in the multitudes. He embraced the lepers. He gave healing to the lame. He gave sight to the blind. The brokenhearted were given hope. He took children in his arms, and the child and everyone around those children felt his loving, tender care. No wonder then that toward the end of his ministry as he made his way to Jerusalem, all of the people who had been helped could not restrain themselves any longer. They had to become part of the parade. Josephus tells us that there were three million people in Jerusalem at that time. These pilgrims could not be contained in their enthusiasm for Jesus of Nazareth. Did they think of him as Messiah, King? They were unsure. But there's a greater magnetism in Jesus dying than there is in his incarnate ministry as Jesus of Nazareth. And when he was raised up on the cross, he died for the sins of the world, for you and for me. And his death and that cross has for 2,000 years been the dynamic magnet to draw us out of ourselves into his heart. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all peoples to myself. 
John was very careful to point out that Jesus had said this about his death. As Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. In the same way, no one comes to Christ but through his death. We cannot know him and his power for us except we look at the cross and know what he has done for us. It's amazing to me, anytime we talk about the cross, people are magnetically drawn. Their attention is gained immediately simply because it's the impartation of the heart of God in time and in space of what he is toward us eternally. You see, God lives above time and space, and what he does at any particular moment is for all time and space. And therefore, Calvary is now. What he did there on that hill outside of Jerusalem is for you and me right at this moment. That's awesome to me. And when I look at the cross, I'm drawn up. I'm pulled out of myself. What is the magnetic power of the cross? Consider, first of all, unqualified love. It's prevenient grace. It's forgiveness before we even ask for it. It's caring for us before we deserve it. In the cross, Jesus Christ has expressed the inner heart of God's forgiving love. Paul put it clearly. Even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Does that catch you? and pull you magnetically to that cross? It does me. I'm pulled out of myself. I need to be loved, need to be accepted as I am, need to be freed of self-justification. Do you? Do you feel the magnet pulling you? There's life for a look. Oh, there's life for a look at the crucified one. Oh, look and be free. But it's more than that. As we look up at the cross and see Jesus dying for you and me, we know that there is a once never to be repeated sacrifice for the sins of the world taking place. And we're gripped by that. And it lifts us out of ourselves. It pulls us. But more than that, we see that there is a power to transform our lives, that the same power that was at work there on Calvary is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. That same power is available to you and me, unlimited power to transform our lives, to make us new people. And the secret is, as Paul expressed it in the sixth chapter of Romans, as we are buried with him in a death like his, we shall be raised with him in a resurrection like his. As we look at the cross, we are magnetically drawn out of our old selves. We die to our old pride and patterns. And out of us comes a new person. The wonder of it all is that in Jesus Christ, a whole level, a whole new level, Life was revealed. I am the way, the truth, and the life. In him was life, and his life was the light of the world. And he reveals what you and I can become. And he gives us that power. That's what draws us. But more than that, behind that cross was the fatherhood of Calvary the loving heart of the Father reaching out to you and me, and it pulls us. Do you feel it pulling you today? I do. And from what does that magnetic power pull us? First of all, it pulls us from the grasp and hold of Satan. Does that sound old-fashioned to you? Ha <laughs> it isn't. Jesus Christ came into the world to confront the forces of evil. He said, now is judgment come into the world, and the ruler of this world is now disarmed of his power and taken from his throne. That's what was taking place at Calvary. Jesus Christ was doing battle with the forces of evil, and by the power of God, he won. Now, most of us say, but I don't know anything about Satan and forces of evil. I'm a good person. That is Satan's 
greatest tool. He has no more potent strategy than to make us feel that by being good enough, adequate, responsible, caring people, that we will be able to earn our right in heaven. And once he convinces us of that, we no longer need the cross nor a savior, and we become traditional Christians and join the ranks of dull, drab, dead church people. And he's one. You say, oh, I, don't, I don't support pornography. I don't pick up girls on the street. I pay my bills. Uh, I don't hurt people. I don't kick dogs or beat up children. I'm going to go to heaven. And Satan is one. All those good things keep us from the gospel. The power of the cross pulls us out of the grip of that dependence on our own goodness. More than that, he pulls us out of our sin. Sin is separation from God. It's uh, missing the mark of the reason for which we were born. And he forgives us of our sins and washes us clean. There's power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Does that sound old-fashioned? Let it stand. There's power in blood because the blood is the life, said Moses. And when Jesus' blood was poured out on the cross, he gave his life for you and for me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else can help, love lifted me. Have you been lifted by that? But more than that, Jesus Christ draws us out of the prison house of a sense of guilt. Guilt is simply the real self and the performing self and the judgmental self interacting in the wrong way. When we fail, we judge ourselves and determine that we're not worthy, and we need grace and acceptance. That's why the cross pulls us. The magnet pulls us up because we need desperately to know that we are loved and forgiven. And then the cross lifts us out of our moods. Take any bad mood back to its source. It's usually when we took over the judgment of ourselves or took someone else's judgment of us and accepted that as reality and truth. And from that moment, little by little, the bad mood began to develop until finally we were engulfed in the quicksand of it until all that's left is one little finger sticking up out of the muck and mire. But the Lord, the uplifting Lord takes a hold and pulls us up and gets us going again. He is the magnetic power. The cross is the magnet. And he draws us up. Hosanna! Lord, save now! And he answers, even I, when I am lifted up, will draw all peoples to myself, even you.